Well, good day. I hope everyone is well. Here's my first effort at trying to make a video lecture. So a few notes on 4.6, the inverse of functions. I've already had a few questions on this. And uh, obviously my notes that I put on were not sufficient. So uh, a few thoughts about this and I'll work a few of the uh, Hawks problems as well. First of all, concept, inverse of functions. If you think of inverse as simply the, the reverse of a function, it gives you, uh, I think, a greater understanding of what we're talking about here. Uh, you may recall that we talked about functions in a couple of different ways, actually four different ways. Here's the first two. The first one was just a mapping. Remember this? Elements in the domain mapped onto elements in the range. First concept of a function, a simple picture, a mapping. Second uh, representation of a function was just a, a list of ordered pairs. Notice, zero is related to three. That's the ordered pair, zero, three. One, five, two, seven. All right, if I'm talking about the inverse of the function, I need to give it a new name. This function is f of x equal two x plus three. I'm gonna talk about the inverse of the function like this. F inverse of x. Now that is not an exponent, that is another use of that negative one to simply mean the inverse of the function, the reverse of the function. Now if I'm reversing a mapping, f of x looks like that. Guess what f of x looks like? Oh, go ahead, go ahead and guess. It looks like 3, 5, and 7 are now in my new domain, and 0, 1, and 2 are now in my new range. And just as 0 is mapped to 3, now 3 is mapped to 0, 5 is mapped to 1, 7 is mapped to 2. So if I'm reversing or taking the inverse of a mapping, I simply switch the domain and the range. Well, if I'm taking the inverse or the reverse of a list of ordered pairs, you got it. I simply reverse the ordered pairs. Every x, y becomes a y, x. 0, 5, 1, 2, 7. Uh, 7, 2. Now, your first uh, Hawks problem says, hey, here's some ordered pairs. Show me what the inverse of the function looks like. You simply switch every x, y to a y, x, and that's the inverse of the function. One of your Hawks problems does this. It says uh, y equals x plus five. And then it says, find four points in the inverse of that function. So this is my f of x right here. This is my initial function. I want to find four points in the inverse of that function. It's not as hard as it seems. All I have to do is find four points in that function and then just turn them around. So I'm going to pick some x's. Make it easy on myself. Zero. Zero plus five is five. One. One plus five is six. Two. Two plus five is seven. Three. Three plus five is seven. So there are four ordered pairs in my original function. So if I'm looking for ordered pairs in the inverse of the function, I simply switch them. Five, zero. Six, one. Seven, two. Eight, three. Submit that to Hawks and it will be happy. So again, to summarize, find four points in your original function, switch the X and the Y, and you have four points in your inverse function. Now here's where it gets a little exciting. Uh, to do the inverse of a mapping, I just switch the domain and the range. To do the inverse of ordered pairs, I just switch every x and every y. What if all I have of this function 
is its equation, as in the equation I have right here, f of x equal 2x plus 3. How can I find the inverse of that particular function? I put these notes, I put these steps in the notes that I put online, but uh, it might have to go over it uh, step by step. Remember what an inverse does. It switches every x and every y. So here's step one. Write it in terms of y. And you know that f of x is the same as y. That's step one. Write it in terms of y. Step two, switch the x and the y. So instead of y equals 2x plus 3, I'm going to write x equals 2y plus 3. I switched the x and the y. Yes, after all, what an inverse does, right? Every x, y becomes a y, x. So I switch the x and the y. My step, my step three is to solve for y. Because after all, every function is expressed as y equals. So I'm going to solve this guy for y. All right. So I have x equals 2y plus 3. Want to get y by itself? Let's get rid of that 3. I want to get y, not 2y, so I divide by 2. And I got it. y is x minus 3 over 2. And final step, express that as f inverse of x. In the place of y, I put f inverse of x is x minus 3 over 2. Steps, express it in terms of y, switch your x and your y, and then solve for y, and you have your new function, the inverse of your original f of x. All right, put away those texting devices. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. So let's do one that's a little bit more sophisticated than that. The f of x is more sophisticated than a linear function like this one. Here's one from your Hawks. W of x is x squared plus 4x. Oops. This is another kind of problem, but let's go ahead and go over this. Now here's the question that Hawks is going to ask you. Hey, here's a function. W of x equals x squared plus 4x. Does it have an inverse that is also a function? That's the question Hawks is going to ask you. Now obviously there's only two answers and you're going to get it right because you've got multiple choices, multiple chances to get it right. But the question is, when it comes to your test, how are you going to get it right? Here's what you're going to do. You're going to remember that there is a third and a fourth way to talk about a function. First was the mapping, domain and range. Second was the list of ordered pairs. Third was an equation. And the fourth is a graph. Now, I don't need to get too detailed to know what the graph of wx equal x squared plus 4x looks like. All I need to know is it is an upward turning parabola. How do I know it? It's a parabola because it's got an x squared. It's upward turning because that number in front is positive. So I don't know what it looks like, but let's just draw an upward turning parabola. All right, question. Is that a function? I know it is a function because I use the vertical line test. No vertical line will cut this in more places than one. I use the vertical line test 
to see if this graph represents a function. Is its inverse a function? Instead of the vertical line test, you probably guessed it already, I'm going to use the horizontal line test. I'm going to see if a horizontal line will cut this graph in more places than one. Hey, obviously it does. A horizontal line can easily cut in more places than one. This guy fails the horizontal line test. That tells me its inverse is not a function. It'll have an inverse. But it is not a function. So you have your, uh, hopefully you still have your list of um, basic graphs of functions, uh, or basic graphs, some of which are functions, and some of which have inverses that are functions. But uh, I know that this is an upward turning parabola, I know that's a function because it passes the vertical line test. Hey, let's test it to see if it is, if its inverse is also a function. That's the horizontal line test. Sorry, it fails the horizontal line test. Its inverse is therefore not a function. So I would choose on this number four on a Hawks, not, inverse is not a function. Look at another of your familiar basic functions. Again, looking at the graph of the thing. This is uh, f of x equal x cubed. You see this guy right there, f of x equal x cubed. That's what it looks like. You locate this uh, bit of your notes. Hey, is it a function? Yes, it is because it passes the vertical line test. Is its inverse a function? Because it passes the horizontal line test. Any horizontal, any horizontal line will only cut this graph in one place. Inverse of function, yes, it passes the horizontal line test. So if you know what a graph looks like in general, you can apply the vertical line test to see if it's a function. You can apply the horizontal line test to see if its inverse is also a function. Right, so mapping, ordered pairs, equation, and a graph, the four ways we looked at a function, and the four ways we can think about their inverses. Let's do one more at least of the uh, changing, or finding the uh, equation of an inverse. Let's do a, let's do a difficult one. Okay, how about uh, this guy? Same steps as over here, just a little bit different. Now I want to find f inverse of x. Here's my f of x. I want to find its inverse, f inverse of x. Step one, express in terms of y. Y is 2x to the one fifth minus 4. Step 2, switch my x and my y. And hey, if my x shows up more than once, I've got to switch it more than once. Switch my x and my y. Step 3, solve this guy for y. Now that's going to be the challenge. Obviously, I want to get this thing with y in it all by itself, so I'm going to add 4 to start with. I want to get the 
y by itself, so I'm going to get the 2y to the 1 fifth by itself. I'm going to divide by 2. So I get y to the 1 fifth. y to the 1 fifth is x plus 4 over 2. Now, remember this little concept that if I have a, a power raised to a power, what do I do with these two exponents? I multiply. That's x to the sixth. I use that concept to simplify this guy. y to the one-fifth. What power would I want to take this to in order to get y all by itself? Well, it's five times one-fifth that are reciprocals. So five over one or to the fifth power. Is what I'm going to do to both sides. So this to the fifth power and x plus 4 over 2 to the fifth power. 5 times, I'm sorry, 5 times 1 fifth is 1. I just get y is x plus 4 over 2 to the fifth power. Hey, I've solved it for y. So that tells me that f inverse of x is that thing right there. F inverse of x is x plus 4 over 2 to the fifth power. And that's what I would submit to Hawks. All right, uh, I'll try to keep uh, putting some of these on my YouTube channel check it out and uh, I'll uh, do my best to, to anticipate questions or anticipate difficult areas and uh, get those to you. For the record, I think I've already said that one of your sections is not going to be required. I believe it's 6-1. Uh, look on your quickly content. One of your sections, don't worry about doing it. You go, hey, well, it's going to affect my grade. No, it won't. At the end, I'll simply eliminate that section, and it will not count against you. So don't worry about the, the section that deals with asymptotes. And I'll see you next time.